tight. Oh, you missed my ears as well. Ah. <laughs> Bye. Oh yeah. Oh, they're cute. I just bought these in Sainsbury's because I did have a pair of cat ears like this that were really like simple. But I just thought, you know, it's Halloween, isn't it? Why can't I wear cat ears now? Just got back from Sainsbury's and we found a Jack Skellington and he does light up. Uh, it's a bit crap. I genuinely don't think there's any use for that. It's got one little LED in there and it doesn't really do very much. Might look alright at night time, but for now, I think he, because he's just so neutral, I couldn't leave him there. And he's a nice little Disney touch to the area. So that's, that's what he's going to look like. There you go. Love my ears. Just nice and simple lacy ones. And then a little three tiered jack, jack stack. He was £18. Worth every penny. It's freaking best. I love help. So I've got family coming around tonight for dinner and uh, grandparents, mum and Sam obviously and it's going to be the first time we use the dining table. I'm actually really excited about it. I'm going to make this like autumnal stew that I've made once already and it's actually really good. So I'm going to make that again. It's butternut squash and then I'm going to make a pumpkin pie for dessert. Look at me in my little autumn house. I love him there even so I don't know where I'm going to put him yet. But I just love the fact that he's neutral. And uh, I mean I know he's only black and white Jack Skellington anyway but it actually looks quite cool in my nice little autumnal setup. And it adds a little touch of Halloween without being too like cheesy Halloween, I really like it. I'm not gonna wear these all day by the way, I just think they're cute and I'm, um, I'm just in the spirit today. I'm feeling very Halloween-y, especially as I'm doing this, uh, this dinner. I'm gonna start prepping it fairly soon actually and sort out the pumpkin pie. I don't know whether you're supposed to have it hot or room temperature or cold. I need to Google this because I've never made it before. I don't actually know what to do. I'm gonna tidy up the table because it looks a bit of a mess. I got um, I got these little pumpkin candles the other day sent to me, and they are the most cute, cutest little pumpkin candles ever. They smell like white chocolate, and they're so cute and adorable. So I need to find somewhere for them to live. And they're so tiny. This one's my favourite, I think, because it's so detailed. But it's just, it's just like a tiny baby pumpkin. There's no pack branding on the packaging at all. But I think these are from a company called Burnt Beige. Uh, they're on Instagram. I did a load of washing earlier, so I need to get all that out and hang it up. I've stripped our bed, so I, um, I'm going to have to make that later. That's a job for later on, Charlotte. Not current, Charlotte. I'm going to get... Oh, I don't like saying my name like that. It's weird. I need a basket. I'm sorry, I just can't get over him. I just think he's so perfect. He, kind of just, he just goes with everything. Oh. So good, and it's nice to have a little Disney touch in here as well. It's a bit of a workout, but I can't remember what these are called. But they're basically like a, like an animal hair roller thing. It's basically like a lint brush but it's reusable, I'm shouting now. It's basically a lint brush, but it's reusable. And it's got like a thing that picks up all the hair here and as you're doing it, it swipes back and forth so it cleans itself off. And then it, this is gross, it collects all the hair. This is all cat hair from the sofa. I try and do this really frequently. Like this isn't just from just then, this is like, well, probably like a week, a week worth of cat hair. Um, but it's so good. And the fact that it's reusable and I don't have to keep using lint roller strips is so much better because they're they're just so wasteful. And this is probably it probably takes a little bit longer and it's a bit more of a workout, but I really, really recommend it if you've got pets.
she's licking them out now. That is her absolute favorite thing called Licky Licks, I think. Or we call it Licky Licks, I'm sure that's the brand name. It's basically just like salmon yogurt, I suppose, for cats. And she is her absolute favorite thing. She'll be here until every last drop is gone. I moved Jack and I actually love him here. I took off the, the bunny tails and just popped them on there for the time being because there's nowhere else that's tall enough to handle her for the minute. So I think I'm gonna put some pumpkins around her and move that candle out and put that somewhere else. Because I think that Jack, the height of him just kind of lends himself to being there and I don't want to just be on the floor. He's so cool that he needs his own proper space. And yeah, love it. I know I keep talking about this, but I'm just really excited. So it's all nice and tidy and cat free and I've sprayed it with like a freshener, so that's nice. I figured while I am waiting for them to arrive and I'm gonna start prepping stuff at about three o'clock. It's 20 to, 20 to three now. So I think for 20 minutes, maybe more, I'll see how I get on. I'm gonna try and read some of this. The Priory of the Orange Tree, I can't even remember what it's called then. The Priory of the Orange Tree. I'm 50-ish, 55 pages away from the end. I, at the moment, do not recommend it unless you are really into fantasy. Uh, like political fantasy, it's not so much, I don't really know how to describe it, because it is fantasy, but there's not that much happening action-wise. There's not really strong love interests. I need a love interest. There's not that much action. There are loads of dragons in it, but they're only in it for like a couple of pages and the rest of the time, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of talking, a lot of politics. Like it's good, it's kept my attention, but I've never really been that excited to read it. It's not one of those ones I can't put down. I have been able to put it down a lot, which is why I'm still reading it. I think, I think I've been reading it for like two and a half weeks now or two, two weeks, which is a long time for me, but then it is an 800 page book. It is a big one, but I'm just excited to start reading some autumnal ones. I've bought a couple on my Kindle. And um, one is called the X-Hex, a really bad example of it, but the X-Hex, this one here. And that is just a rom-com. And I think that'll be really nice, a nice quick read after this one. I think that's the only actual Halloween-y book that I've got on my Kindle at the moment, but I do want to get a couple more. I might pick up Dracula, actually. So these are the possibilities for October after I finish this stupid ass book. We've got Caravel, which, think about Maze, Players, a mystery. Um, I'm sure this is a like a circusy theme. Oh yeah, it's got circus on it. Circusy themed fantasy thing. We've got Ninth House by Leah Bardugo, who has written. Uh, my camera just decided to stop filming because it ran out of memory, which is always fantastic. So I was saying that Ninth House is another one on my list for October. Um, it is by I don't know how to say her name. Leah Bardugo. Bardugo. Um, she wrote the. Shadow and Bone series, which is on Netflix, and I'm trying not to watch it so I can read it first, but this is one that I have by her, so I'll read this, but I bought it purely because of the sprayed black edges. How cool does that look? Like, super cool. Uh, this is something to do with Supernatural, and it's based in, like, American universities, I think? Yeah, is a member of Yale's freshman class, a dropout and the sole survivor of a horrific unsolved crime. But I'm sure it's got some sort of like witchy, weird um, sorority house thing going on in it. Everybody knows the tale of Dracula, the first vampire, Bram Stoker. And this is one of those classics I've wanted to read for a long time, but I might see how I get on with it. You need a lot of patience and a lot of time, I think, to read classics because you feel much more invested to read something like this. Then I've got uh, The Star of Sea by Erin Morgenstern. So she wrote The Midnight Circus. Was it the Night Circus? I think it's just called the Night Circus. I've got it on my Kindle, so I can't. I never see the front of it. I never really see the front of the book because it's always just open on the page I'm on. But yeah, this is another one I like the sound of. Zachary Rawlings stumbles across a mysterious library book containing details from his own life amongst its pages. It leads him on a quest unlike any other. Masquerade party, a dangerous secret club, and a labyrinth filled with stories. It just sounds good. It sounds mysterious and a good one for October. And then this one I have had for years and years and years and i've just never got around to reading it so it is yeah wow what all this sticker is on top of um it's something to do with vampires i think i don't think i bought it knowing it was about vampires or maybe i did because i was a teenager i think when i bought this and you know twilight every teenage girl read twilight i won't even 
Got everyone read it. I hate this. Why do I put these stickers on books? Just ruins them. Oh, a spirited update of Bram Stoker's classic. Vastly ingenious plot in which Dracula has developed a mysterious pen penchant? Penchant? Penchant. For librarians? Okay. So yeah, these are my autumn possibilities and the X-Hex, which is on my Kindle. So I read like a chapter, maybe two, um, and then decided I'll try and edit this vlog, but my laptop has been incredibly slow. My laptop is just having a moment and I can't, like I can't select multiple things. Yeah, see? The spinning wheel of doom. For God's sakes, I thought if I just leave it for a bit, maybe I'll come back and then I can export it, but at the moment, technology! Little sleepy monkey. You're adorable. Do you sit in right in the shady spot there? There's so much sun, baby. So much sun. Thing along the lines of this, it is honestly so, so good. It's mainly potato and butternut squash, but it's also got chicken thighs in it and onion, chicken stock, um, tomato puree, and what's the other one? Tin tomatoes. Basically, I mean, there's other bits and bobs, but they're like, that's the main bulk of stuff that's in it. I think you can make it without chicken, but it just adds a bit more flavour. I did it with chicken breasts last time, but you're supposed to do it with chicken thighs, so we will do that. Um, it's just on a website called Little Broken. I tend to just Google things that I have and find a nice recipe, and then I'll just work with that. So this is just called a chicken stew with butternut squash. It's mainly butternut squash with a bit of chicken. Yeah, I'm going to start prepping that, put that together, and uh, that's my day. Hopefully once it's all in the pan, it can just sit and simmer for a little while, come back to it, and then it should just be perfect because it's had the time to blend all the flavours together and stuff. And I will also figure out how to make pumpkin pie. I've got this pumpkin puree stuff that I'm pretty sure is American. I have it in the American section in Sainsbury's. And then just the regular short crust pastry because I'm not making my own pastry. I can't bake anyway, so I'm not gonna try and make pastry from scratch as well as making the whole thing from scratch. So uh, yeah, I've got high hopes. I've got high hopes. Oh, and I did find the vegan condensed milk alternative. So it does, the recipe does call for um, double cream or something like that. And I'm hoping that this will be a good substitute because obviously I don't eat dairy. And I'm, I'm just hoping that's gonna work. Tully's pumpkin patch. We went to the wrong one earlier, but we well, are in the right one. We went to like the scare, scare farm. farm, but now we're in the like the proper pumpkin patch. We're in a massive field, basically for the pumpkins. Surprise! I am super self-conscious vlogging in public, so I don't oh. do it very often at all. But there's no one around me at the moment, so I feel like I can get away with it. Yeah, we're in Tully's farm somewhere in Surrey. I think it's kind of on the way to Brighton. Uh, it took us about an hour to get here. And it's huge, I've never been before, but there's two massive fields of pumpkins, which is why we're in one of them right now. It's very sunny, it's a really nice day. It was supposed to rain, I think it did rain earlier, but it's nice now. Yeah, they've got loads of stuff here. There's loads of food stalls, uh, photo opportunities, there's a sweet stand, and there's, ca there's characters walking around, like an autumn princess with like pumpkin wreath on her head and a jester, and they're all stopping taking pictures of people, and it's just really cute, isn't it? It's just... Yeah, it's a nice this is definitely time. like the biggest pumpkin thing we've ever been to because I tend to go to local ones where it's literally just yeah. pumpkins and then maybe they've got a nice photo set up which is nice but this is like a proper themed day out it's it's really cool I definitely definitely come back all of these pumpkins and a lot of them are still attached and they've got a lot of green pumpkins and some white but I think most of the white ones have all been picked and they're at the front I really wanted to find a big white pumpkin, but I don't think they even exist. I think it's only the big yellow, yellow? <laughs> the big orange pumpkins 
that you can buy but there's still loads of um, little pumpkin flowers as well I think you can eat these don't hold me to that but I'm pretty sure they're edible not that I'm gonna start picking them but that's cool and they're really pretty also not quite cold enough for a hat but it's not a hair wash day and I expected it to rain so I figured I'd put this on to cover up the, the hair situation I've got my new jacket on and my hunter belly boots because it is muddy. I'm gonna go find one to pick. The one on the end's quite nice. Yeah, he's a good one. You don't want the one next to it. Well, that one, <laughs> That's uh, huge. No. Oh, I think the, the little ones are like two pound and they go up to 20. Yeah, I'll say what uh, the bloke said the other, on the other thing. I love you, but not 20. Uh, not 20 for a 20 quid pumpkin. pumpkin. <laughs> and he's also absolutely covered in spiders. Yeah, it's outside. It'll be fine. Oh, there is actually, isn't there? Coming out that one. Yeah, don't take this. Are there ants? In, what? No, they're spiders. Oh, I don't think you can see them. I mean, it is their house. This is why you wear wellies, so you can traipse properly through the pumpkins and find the best ones. Very excited by the sheer amount of orange that is here. It's a really good pumpkin field as well. I've been to the lot before, and they've had like three pumpkins, and then that's it. There's a massive white one here, but are you dead? It's not dead, it's just very muddy. You're yes, done. Dear. I tore him off of that. That vine. Fresh. Fresh pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Get your fresh pumpkins. He's pumpkins. Cute. Really upset because we've now found the barbecue shack that sells pork pork burgers and stuff, and we've already had. Um, from the bit bummed out about the waffles. Yeah. Waffles and coffee. We've already had. What did you have? Like a burger. And I had some yeah, chips. Yeah, but that would have been like so much better. They're not sombreros, they're farmers. Hats. They're sombreros. <laughs> that looks like a sombrero to me. <laughs> in memory of Henry, died in a vacuum cleaner related incident. It sucked. <laughs> in loving memory of rigor mortis, a solid fellow. Weirdest pumpkin you've ever seen. This is the loot. This is Sam's pumpkin, this is my pumpkin, and we're gonna get a little baby one, and a green one, and a little white one, because I thought he was cool. I'd like a big white one, but they're all a bit dodge. Like, I might get this one, but then he's sideways. It's just like this. Sideways. He is, he's grown flat underneath. This is precarious, it's probably not gonna stay. Um, Sam bought some, some snacks for the road trip, so we've got some spooky flapjack bites, but we're pretty sure they're just flapjacks, which is disappointing. Flapjack. Good, at least have some cinnamon in it or pumpkin spice. Well, that um, oh, let's put all of the pumpkins in the boot and I'm gonna change out my wellies because I don't think I can drive in wellies and they're really really muddy. <laughs> this is where we're going for dinner after. Hey, <laughs> Smith and Weston, really really lovely here. They've got a massive lake, like a huge lake, and it takes ages to walk around it. They've got a go ape somewhere in that direction. I can hear it like. I can hear the zip wire zoom in along. Course, and then that course, massive course. Smith and Weston. I said this already, we're just having a wander. We've just come here from Tully's Pumpkin Farm to have a walk and go for dinner at Smith and Weston. And then it's going to take us probably just over an hour to get home. Has a squirrel in the tree! Ah, uh, oh, there's a squirrel. Oh, I got distracted by some squirrels because they're really cute. A nice day, pumpkin picking. Yeah, nice wholesome day. I've had a really wholesome weekend. Like that evening yesterday with my grandparents, making like, what did I make? Butternuts, butternut squash and chicken stew, and then I made a pumpkin pie from scratch. So good. Like I had a proper autumnal weekend. Yeah. And uh, a pumpkin patch today. Look at these trees. Yeah, I do want to go over there. Not gonna lie. Autumn is my absolute favourite, it's so pretty. So nice. Yeah. how pretty it is here right now. 
it's sunset and the trees are all turning yellow and brown and red and it's just gorgeous. <laughs> 